Why NFTs are going to zero absolutely and no more else than zero. In the video of today, we are going to see why NFTs are getting beaten up in the market, why all of them are bleeding out. They are going so much down in price. And most importantly, what future do they have depending on the different category of NFTs that we have? We'll check what are NFTs, which categories do we have, why most of them are basically bullshit and are going to end up in zero. And I'm going to use this example to give a little bit my opinion about NFTs because I didn't give it before I haven't talked about NFTs a lot and I have a kind of developed opinion about them which I think that they may be useful for some things in the future we'll talk about that but they are mostly not useful and well just a lie in general right now the NFTs that people talk about so that's what we're gonna see in the video of today if you like the video don't forget to smash the like button to help the channel it helps a lot I always say it if you like more videos like this subscribe and ask me, Pedro, I want more videos like this. And with no more further ado, no, wait, if you have questions also, you can ask us in Instagram before I forget. And now, with no more further ado, let's go! Okay, so here we are, and the first thing we have to see is the definition of, of an NFT to be able to understand it correctly and understand first what functions can it have, okay? So basically, an NFT, as you may probably know, okay, you will probably know that, is a non-fungible token. What does this mean, basically? It means that it's an asset on the blockchain with an unique identification code, which means it's not traded, it cannot be traded or exchanged for another NFT at equivalence, okay? It's not like a cryptocurrency. What does that mean? Basically, an NFT is, well, kind of like a picture, okay? When you have, for example, this NFT, that is Mumurkat 330, it's not the same as Mumurkat 581, okay? The both of them are NFTs, both are from the same collection, but they are different. It's like different pieces of a collection, of a cloth collection, for example. As you can see, when you see it visually, it's very easy to see, they are two different pictures. But basically an NFT doesn't have to be specifically a picture, it's basically two objects that represent something and that cannot be exchanged for another, they are not the same, that's a very important part of it, okay? So what is the main use of NFTs in the actual time that we live on? Well, basically NFTs are none of other thing that is speculation, okay? Everybody who buys an NFT buys it because he wants to speculate on price, he thinks that the price is gonna go up because the kid is look kind of cute and I'm not joking this is how it works it's literally the same with all of the collections okay what made NFTs so popular because the real the reality is that NFTs were popular super super popular during this year okay as you can see here we have Google Trends and we can see how popular the term NFT was as you can see before the bull run of 2021, nobody even knew what an NFT was, okay? It was something that people just didn't know what it is, okay? Then it got kind of popular during the bull run. In the summer, it kind of died off, same as the crypto market. But in September, it started going and going and going and going. And in December, remember, in December, in January, the crypto market was already going down. It was just everywhere. NFT, NFT this, NFT that. Everyone wanted to know about NFTs. Everyone wanted to buy an NFT, okay? It got super mainstream, even more mainstream instant and crypto you can see crypto had a very nice run in 2017 in 2021 uh, it got a very run up it got very popular during the first bull market during like the may far the phase the march phase of 2021 but in 2022 it didn't grow that much look this is january in january it was on a normal level but nfts were popping off everybody wanted something in nfts nft this nft that nft everywhere okay they got super popular because I don't know, how are they not going to get popular? There are some weird images that they're selling for thousands of millions. People want to understand why, right? And after that, they just die, okay? It's just basically a trend of one day, and then they die, they keep dying, and right now, they are literally dead. Like, <laughs> the NFTs are dead in general, okay? That's the main point that we're going to talk about. So, why NFTs got so popular? Well, NFTs got so popular because there is a lot of different collections of NFTs, but they were mainly two or three couple of things that made them very popular. The first thing that made them popular was games, okay? There was a lot of NFTs that you could use in games, like in Axie Infinity, to play games and earn crypto, which was like a crazy thing, crazy idea, right? Uh, this got super, super popular, but this was more of a 2021 thing. We'll talk about it because this is the first type of NFTs. NFTs for games, for play to earn, that are basically a Ponzi scheme, okay? That's what really are. 
people don't really knew this in the beginning, but now it's super clear that they actually were like a Ponzi. And if people don't come in, you don't make money. Kind of like in crypto, but in a game, it's not the same thing. I'll explain this after. Other category of NFTs that we have, and this is the most famous ones, as you can see here, you can see the most famous ones are Axe Infinity, Bored Up, Jade's Club, and Crypto Punks. What is Bored Ape Judge Club? Well, Bored Up, Jade's Club, is the second type of NFT that we're gonna see that builds a community and is has something different. As you can see, these NFTs that we have here of a cat, they have literally, literally nothing special. Okay, nothing special. This like how many is 759 cats with nothing special. It's just cats that look different. Okay, that's all. It's like a profile picture you can put on WhatsApp. How much would you pay for that? 25 euro? You wouldn't pay more than that, right? Well, that's because there has been thousands of them. The only ones who actually started doing it good was Bored Up, uh, Bored Ape, Judge Club. And these guys basically made something different. They created a community. This is another type of NFTs. NFTs for communities. Okay, it's a different token. Lastly, we're going to talk about the NFTs for games. NFTs for with actual use, NFTs that you can trade and you can buy and you can do stuff with, okay? Like NBA Top Shot, which is another collection of NFTs that is a little bit different. We'll talk about it later. So why NFTs got so popular? Well, the thing that made them the most popular and the best example is Bored Ape Jazz Club, okay? These NFTs were super popular. You can find them here, basically. And the point and why they were so famous was because they grow in price so much, okay? Bored Ape Jazz Club grow, okay, the real ones, because all of this is, is fake ones. I should have put the, all the things. Uh, Bored Ape if you put Bored Ape, they will appear directly. You can see these things right now are selling for around 94 Ethereum, okay? 94 Ethereum is like $94,000. It's a lot. But these things, some of them have sold for like a million, 100 million, 50 million, or something like that. Crazy prices, okay? In the bubble, not now, now, they, now everything is collapsing. But in the bubble, they were super expensive. And people were trying to understand why this thing was growing so much in value. What did this monkey have that made them so valuable? Why would people pay so much for these monkeys? Well, they have literally nothing, okay? That's the reality we are talking that when nfts started to be created like on 2021 they were kind of a mean i mean i mean like people were buying them but they were like why like what is the, the the reason why would someone pay so much for nft well in this case they end up like pivoting and moving and generating something that is actually interested for people in nfts and this is what we are talking about which is the first type of nfts community nfts what is the special thing that bored a jazz club or bsc has well what they have is that they create a community a very very unique community as you can see there is 10,000 bullet ape jazz club but probably for sale there are like how much like 100 it's not easy to get inside this community and they have their own community if you have a bullet ape jazz club you can go to the parties with other people who also have a bullet ape jazz club you can meet them you have a discord with them and there is a lot of influential people who got inside these communities we have eminem we have other rappers like i think with Khalifa or some random rappers that bought one of these NFTs and you could literally talk to them in Discord. We're talking about an elite community. So what was the point? What was the value that these NFTs were bringing? What they were bringing was this value of community, of being part of something that is elite, that is unique. And personally, it remembers me a lot of the value of limited sneakers, okay? I come from this world. I used to be buying and selling these sneakers to what is called a sneakerhead, which is people who value these socks just because it well, socks sorry these shoes because they are limited okay if you get the nike air force one with of white uh people want them because they are limited if there were thousands of them they wouldn't care they only want them because there's like 100 in the world and if they can be part of those 100 it's gonna be so cool and you see these guys especially asian guys they love it i don't know why uh, all dress up in supreme and they are like yeah i have this supreme it's number one of 25 in the collection and i'm here with my other friend who also is 25 in the collection and and it's, it's all about this exclusivity you know getting some luxury uh, items but not because they are luxury because they are unique because there's only like 2000 because 2000 is small for t-shirts for example and this is what creates a whole community of sneakerheads of supreme fanboys who used to be super popular in 2018 and everyone wants to wear this uh, this wear this this clothes not because they like the clothes but because of the community they have they are only going with the people who wear that they are going to events only for that they talk all in the same way they dress in the same way and it's a community they are generating this feeling of hey i am part of this community a super super 
super elite expensive community. And guess what? A lot of people from the community of uh, resale shoes that I follow, because as I said, I was in this community. No, no, not that I was dressing like that. Sorry, I was only buying cheap shoes and selling them very expensive. That's what I was doing. Um, again, I never got any of them. I never even tried any of them. Uh, but the point is, this type of people move into NFTs very hard. There's a lot of people who started doing this and Bored Ape Jazz Club is the only working example of a community that actually was created, that actually worked and people want to be part of it because this is a super elite community, okay? It's not easy to generate something like this. And what you can see is that there's a lot of copies, copies of the copies, copies of the copies of the copies with cats, with dogs, with a lot of stupid things that have no value, okay? Every single NFT that tries to create a community but is basically a copy of a copy of a copy is going to zero okay everything is going to zero because why the hell would i buy a cat cat mew that has a community okay because that's the thing there's a lot of projects that started saying like yeah we have a project we have a community we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and 99 percent of them they just stop doing it and they get the money and goodbye okay there is nothing in them they are all going to zero 99 percent of nfts are just trust they are going to zero is that that simple but there is some good like communities like this one that created a huge feeling, a huge atmosphere around, and people is gonna be interested. Is Bored Ape Jazz Club going to zero? I doubt so. I think it may go down, obviously, because it went in price up too much, okay, it was a bubble, and as you can see, the interest has been going down since 2021, but still, it's pretty high. I mean, obviously, it has some days where it peaks and it's like super popular, but in general, there's still some interest, obviously not as much as in 2021, but we can see some interest still in the uh, collection, which in my opinion means that yes, some, some NFTs can have uh, well, can, can live from this and they can be a long-term project and they can have a community. In the case of Bored Ape Jazz Club, of course, there is NFTs that created this community, but this has been exploded so much. There's like 99,000 of it. Like, look at this Pac-Man by Manny Pacquiao. What the hell is that? This is bullshit. That's gonna disappear in two days. It's going to zero. Everything is going to zero, okay? There will be like three surviving or something like that. Second type of NFTs that we have is games, okay? The most famous one, Axie Infinity, which most people thought, oh, that's amazing, Axie Infinity? What is Axie Infinity? Axie Infinity, in the words of people, in the words of people who love this game, it was a game that was allowing people from Argentina to earn a salary playing a game. It's amazing. Well, that amazing game was basically just a Ponzi. The idea was that you have to buy an NFT to be able to earn this income, who's coming from the people who's buying these NFTs. So as you can understand, if people don't buy the NFT, prices go down. You don't make money. There is no game. It's just a very beautiful triangle pyramid scheme. It needs money to come in to be able to take money out, okay? But not only that, this is the biggest ever sale in crypto NFT history. As you can see, here you can see the total volume of sales of these NFTs. Board Ape Jazz Club has 2 billion, billion with a B, but X Infinity is the first one actually with $4 billion, okay? $4 billion. As you can see in their peak, they were having 40 million in sales. 40 million in sales, okay, which is amazing, it's just crazy, in one single day. How much do they have now? 68,000. They are going to zero, obviously, they are going to zero because it's a pyramid skin. Because as soon as people stop buying in, prices are going down, everything is crumbled, there's no way to make your money back, okay? And people don't understand that this can be seen from the outside, okay? It's not difficult to understand that these things are gonna collapse. Another example, Steppen. Steppen is an app that pays you to run because I don't know, seems like someone from, like, like God is giving money to run and they decided to give it to you because you're a great man and you're doing something very nice, which is running? I mean, what the hell are we talking about? Obviously, it's a Ponzi. I mean, in Stephen, in the beginning, if you would buy the famous NFTs and you would go running, in 13 days, you would have your investment back. Are you crazy? How is that going to be sustainable? It cannot be sustainable, obviously. It's just crazy to think that people actually believe that this was a good app, that this was a good idea. It's just a Ponzi. And you can see the floor prices. If we see all of them, they are collapsing, okay? The floor price collapsed. It went high, it went high, and then it collapsed, especially when the prices started collapsing, which means that they basically have collapsed because there's no way, like, they don't bring anything new. It's the idea of this NFT is going to make me money. How? Magically. 
because there's no way it can bring you money just for running or just for playing a game. These games are boring, okay? The problem that Axie Infinity has is that it's boring as hell. Nobody wants to play Axie Infinity because it's fun. They just play it for the money. So as soon as it starts collapsing, nobody plays, okay? Because that's the difference. Cryptocurrency people is buying in all the time and that's why prices go up because it has a technology, because it has a use. But Axie Infinity is just for playing. If playing is boring, why would nobody play? If you're playing just for money, it is a pyramid scheme. It's that simple. And Steppen is the same. Oh yeah, I'm buying Steppen to go run. Oh come on, nobody joins Steppen to go run. You can run like 20 minutes only with this app. If you run more than 20 minutes, they are not paying you. So why would you buy a thing that lets you run only 20 minutes? It's just like a no-brainer, okay? It got super popular, but it's basically a Ponzi scheme, okay? So when you see all of these projects of NFTs that are games, NFTs that are games are all a beautiful triangle that doesn't work, okay? That's the main point. And here we pass to the third type of categories of NFTs, which is NFTs which are collectionables, okay? And here we have NBA, NBA Topshot, okay? What you may be asking, what is NBA Topshot? I'm gonna search it because I didn't search it before because I forgot to open this page. Basically, NBA Topshot is a collection of, uh, well, like, like, how do you say? I don't know how to say it in English, but basically it's a collection of cards, okay? You can check which cards you have and you can earn some cards that are NFTs. It's that simple, okay? So for example, oh, let's check which one I got in this package. Oh, I got a common, I got another common probably. Oh, I got LeBron James, that's amazing. Oh, I got Hallenburg. Oh, I got Terosan, that's amazing, all in the same pack. It's basically like collecting cards, okay? It's the same thing as we used to do when we were young. You have a marketplace, you have drops, you have everything. And you're just buying like packs and you're getting a percentage of like common Common ones, rare ones, legendary ones, and you're just collecting cards. That's the main point. The only thing is that these cards are not physical, they are NFTs, okay? And you may be asking, is this a Ponzi Pedro? Is this a bad idea? Well, this one is basically sponsored by NBA, like official NBA, which is crazy. So what do I think about this type of crypto? Crypto that is just collectionable, uh, NFTs. This type of NFTs that is just collectionable. People that want to collect some cards and they want to trade them. And as you can see, obviously volume is going down. Obviously they are not as popular as they used to be. But what do I think about them? Well, I think this idea can be interesting for people, but we need to understand that cards have a belly value because they are physical. And that's a very important point. If you buy a card from, I don't know, let's say Michael Jordan from the 84, they are super expensive because they're very few, because they are physical. It's very easy that they would like die, like, like get destroyed, get on water. And the fact of having them physically, I think it gives you a lot of I don't know, feelings for the card. If you have it in your computer, I don't think it's the same. So I don't know if these things can work the same, but the idea of using NFTs instead of using cards makes sense, okay? This makes sense for sure. And it's the same thing as buying skins in a video game, which is the future that I think NFTs can have. NFTs can have two futures, one financially, one, I'm not gonna do like that, one for, for games and for collectionables. Yes, you can make uh, collectionables NFTs, but you are not gonna get rich with them, okay? You get a LeBron James of 2021, well, maybe in 20 years you get rich, but right now it's nothing that you're just gonna write up like bought it ape, judge club, I'm sorry, it's terrible to pronounce that is gonna make you rich tomorrow. It's a different idea. It's just being able to trade your cards. And with games, it's exactly the same. Nobody plays Axie Infinity because it's boring as hell, okay? If we would have a game that would be interesting, for example, let's say World of Warcraft, where your skins, you can make them NFTs, so it's easier to use them in the marketplace, that would be interesting because people would play World of Warcraft because it's interesting. They don't play for the money, which is the main point. Money should be the last thing of the NFTs. NFTs are a great utility. You should be able to use them to move stuff from game to game, which is a great idea, but not for the money. Why would you play something only for the money? You're playing. It's supposed to be a hobby. It's supposed to be fun. Nobody wants to do something that's not fun, you know? So um, there's a lot of big games that are trying to use this NFT technology, and I think this is one of the few spaces where NFTs actually have a value. Places where you can just use these NFTs, for example, if you get a sword in a game, you know, kind of like we saw here. Oh, you, I got a super legendary sword in World of Warcraft. I can sell it in the market, and instead of selling it for the coins of the game, I can sell it for real coins, you know, and get them out. Well, that's amazing. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea because it's a game that you're playing for fun, but you're not just opening like cages for legendary stuff. Like it, it does, doesn't make any sense, right? So I think here NFTs would have a chance. These NFTs, I don't hate them. I think they can be interesting. It all depends on how you use them, obviously. And you need to understand also like 
why they have to be NFTs? Well, basically they are supposedly better than having them inside the game. But at the same time, for example, games like CSGO, like Counter-Strike, they have sold like thousands of knives, which are like super expensive. And it's just a mechanic that works in game and they don't have a blockchain and it still works. So that's a good point that I like to, you know, say also and to mention also, like, do we really need to make NFTs? I think it's better. I think it makes it easier. It makes it easier to track them. It's a full atmosphere, like the ecosystem around the NFTs, which makes it very interesting. Even though these NFTs, NBA Topshop, they have their own um, network, okay? They are not in Ethereum, they are in Flow. It's their own network. So it's a different blockchain. But anyways, I think this can be very interesting. Still, as you can see, NFTs volume is going down. Most of NFTs, these are the type of NFTs that I said, like Bored Ape Jazz Club, okay? It's just kitties or, or, or dogs or something that is going to make you millionaire, okay? You come here and you can see thousands of them. There's just, look, dogs, CryptoPunks, other did Mutant Ape Jazz. There is just, I swear, thousands, thousands of them. It's, it's a pain in the ass. I don't like them. I really don't like them. And the, all of this is going to zero, okay? 99% of all of this is going to zero. And that's all you can say, okay? You can see volume is going down, as I said, in OpenSea. You can see this going down from 70, 000, sorry, around 70,000 users to what? 2,000 users? It's literally dead. There's nobody using them anymore, which is a pain. Because what is the real utility of NFTs in my opinion? NFTs do have other utilities, which is basically and simply financial utilities. You want to sell a house or part of a house or part of a car or part of, uh, 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 I don't know, or part of an art collection you create an NFT and you sell pieces of it. That's the only way you can use NFTs because that way you have a way to sell that part of the car, to sell that part of the uh, well, of the picture, for example, and you don't have to keep it all the time. You can sell it whenever you want and you have something that is similar to a bond where you get a yield, but also you can buy and sell at different prices. What do I mean by that? Okay, let's say we get a house and we get some NFTs of the house and we rent the house. So these NFTs are going to get 12% a year because it's what, what we're renting, we're we are sending to the NFTs directly to the person who has the NFT receive this money. Okay, let's say now you don't want this NFT, you need to sell it right away. Well, you sell it, but instead of selling for 100, you sell it for 95 euro if the cost of this NFT was 100 euro. Well, the person who buys it for 95 is not going to get 13% return on the, his NFT. He's going to take 15% because he paid less. So his percentage is higher, you know? So this works basically like a bond. And I think this is what NFTs can do. Bonds are markets that are very illiquid. Buying and selling houses, all these type of investments are very complicated, very difficult to do for people with few money. And here you bring liquidity to this market. You make it very easy because if I go in OpenSea, I like a collection and I say, oh, this guy is selling a house, okay? It's not a just terrible drawing. I click in the collection. I say, oh, that's amazing. This is the, for example, let's say here, it will tell you a part of the price. Uh, this is the percentage that you'll get annually. Da, 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 da. Okay, amazing. I buy it. You buy it and sure, you know, it's super easy. That's the main point. That's why I think NFTs could have an interest because you already have a marketplace where you can sell these things, where you can have liquidity, secondary market liquidity. This is the narrative that can make NFTs interesting, again, in my opinion. And I think this has a future for NFTs. So in resume, NFTs of collectionables, amazing. NFTs of YouTubers, which I didn't comment on them. They're terrible, let's just take them out. NFTs of games, um, Ponzi scheme. NFTs of communities, there's gonna be like one or two that survive. The rest is going to absolutely zero. So the future of NFTs is or financial liquidity or collectionables. There's no more than that, at least in my opinion, and at least for what I have seen now. Maybe in the future they create other narratives, other things that are interesting, but for now this is what I see and this is what I wanted to share with you. If you like the video, please smash the like button for the algorithm and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!